Uh, maybe I'll just start us off. Um, it's a question for Peter, but it relates to Matthew's work too. Uh, Peter, given what you said, you thought that maybe your next step, do you see some overlap with Matthew's work and, and what, what could be done there? The idea of uh, fraternal transitions? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, fraternal transitions are an, definitely an example of, of fusion, and I envision doing something similar at a very high level of, of, of having fusion happen in the simulation. Um, I don't know exactly how yet, but. Uh, it's definitely related to Matthew. Any more questions for our speakers? Yes. I have one. So I mean, one thing I think with uh, looking at looking at this and then looking at like Takashi Todd, um, I think the the sort of closure of open ended systems might be might be relevant. I wonder what you would all say about that. Like in, in all of the talks I think there's this kind of issue that whatever you want to get in the next scale or the next thing should also continue to satisfy whatever conditions or whatever structure that you were thinking about at the scale at which you start, right? Like if, if you had a system that had fusion and fission, but the product of fusion wasn't capable of fusion, then that couldn't be open-ended because the condition would then fail. So I wonder like, what do you all think about that sort of closure aspect of open-endedness? Yeah, I definitely believe that you, you don't have fusion and fusion just once. It's a series. If you look at the major transitions, each each case was a, an example of fusion, and it, the fusion keeps happening over and over and over again and building on the previous fusion. Okay. Any more points for discussion or, or questions? There can be points from the speakers. Uh, you might have spotted some commonalities across your talks. If not, then please, we do have a, a poster, um, and please do stick around.